Joining us now to discuss Poland's cash for visa scandal is Professor Andrew Tettenborn, a law professor from Swansea University. Hello, sir, and welcome to TVP World. Good afternoon. So now, how and is this scandal being uh, described uh, abroad in the UK where you are? Um, the answer, I'm afraid, is very little, uh, which rather worries me because actually I think it's highly important. Um, it's quite true there is an element here of a political attack on law and justice, probably quite a legitimate one, by the Tusk government. Um, but there are severe problems as soon as you get the visa-granting process being compromised like this. Um, we've had problems of this kind elsewhere in the EU before. Uh, notably, I think two or three years ago, it was well known that you could buy your way into EU residency by paying over large sums of money to people connected with the government in Cyprus. Uh, Cyprus was selling over and, one suspects, under the counter visas. Um, now, obviously, we don't want this to be taking place uh, through Poland. And there are two very dangerous consequences that can follow. One is that you can have some very doubtful people getting visas. Um, large numbers, for example, of, of slightly dubious Russians uh, bought their way into the EU through Cyprus. Now, the Russian thing probably is closed off, but you want to be careful that you don't get uh, doubtful people from other countries coming in. Um, the other point is, of course, simply one of security. Um, you want to be very careful to vet applicants for visas insofar as visas are being given out for hard cash. Uh, then you do have a danger that organizations which do not have Poland's best interests at heart or the West's best interests at heart may be quietly infiltrating people into the EU. Right. Now, there have to be obvious uh, implications for the credibility of the institution of, you know, the Polish Foreign Ministry, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the consulates that are issuing such visas. Um, and, and I would imagine that Poland has to be very careful to, well, not damage its credibility. Um, how big of an issue is this when it pertains to this, this particular scandal? I think it's actually very important for Poland at the moment. Um, it's necessary for Poland to avoid, if it can, unnecessary arguments with the EU. And the trouble is, the longer this continues, or the, or the longer this continues unsorted out, um, Poland is very much open to accusations from the EU that, as you say, this is undermining the entire Schengen Agreement. Um, because once you have an arrangement, as you have in the EU, that essentially once you have the entry to one EU country, you have the entry to all 26. Um, then clearly it is very important for Brussels that, uh, the, that, that we avoid any suggestion that there may be a back door. So now you mentioned the uh, back door and previously you also said, uh, talked about, well, other world players who don't necessarily have the West's best interest at heart. And now if we look at this and the hybrid warfare that Putin has been uh, waging uh, on the borders with Finland or Poland, how just how much maybe of a danger or how might uh, he use this to his advantage? Um, I think he might very well, obviously. He won't have people coming in directly from Russia because I think that would probably raise too many suspicions. But from countries sympathetic to Russia, 
um, they might there might very well be large sums of money being spent. And the trouble is, all you need is one or two people of that kind coming in to provide a very credible threat to the security of Poland and many other countries, especially in Eastern Europe. And that is exactly what Russia would like. Um, the more frightened countries like Poland and Estonia and Lithuania are that their security may have been compromised, the more that plays into the hands of Vladimir Putin. Now, um, uh, Mr. Tattenburn, you mentioned earlier that uh, you believe this is uh, potentially a political attack by uh, Prime Minister Donald Tusk against the Law and Justice Party. Um, but what particular threads in this scandal do you see uh, that are potentially being exploited by the ruling coalition against their, their, their rivals and, and the former government? Oh, I think this is merely, um, if you like, a tidying up exercise. And I don't necessarily say that it's illegitimate at all. Um, but any incoming government will obviously... Um, to some extent, relish the opportunity to say, we have uncovered this scandal. We're now taking steps to do something about it. But it seems to have been the fault of the people who were previously in charge. It's a very old political technique um, and a very well-tried one. All right. Uh, Professor Andrew T uh, Tietenborn from Swansea University, thank you very much for breaking it down for us and shedding more light uh, on this issue. Thank you. My pleasure.